Long time, no see. It's your boy Turk, and I'm back with another episode of Wise Up. You know, I've been playing football since I've been able to, to walk. Ever since I've been able to run, I've been fascinated with it. And one of the main things I ever learned from football was discipline. Discipline is like the number one thing when it comes to any team sport because it shows you sportsmanship. It, it gives you a better idea of, you know, uh, self-control. So, you know, you jump off sides, you do 10 push-ups. If you drop the ball, you do 10 push-ups. Um, if, if you're in the wrong position, you would do 10 push-ups. So you would run a lap. It's all about discipline. And if you are good enough to discipline yourself without a coach or your dad or, or whoever your figure is to tell you to do so, I think you're ahead of the game. Travis Scott. And on me, Travis Scott. Um, look, I'm willing to be wrong, but we're gonna have this talk. Uh, we could debate in the comments. Just keep it respectful and uh, don't yell at me. So about a week ago at the Astro World uh, Festival, you guys know the story, but this is just my explanation of why it's not his fault. Before you get in the comments or dislike the video, just listen. At least get to the end of the video so we're not making the same points. So one of the things I seen was people saying that he's in control of the crowd control and the capacity. Now, again, this is just from my experience. I worked at TD Garden before as a security guard. And I know the venue, which is TD Garden, was responsible for crowd control, capacity, counting numbers for attendance, and searching people for weapons or drugs or just things they're not supposed to have in general. The venue does that, not the artists. So just from my experience, the venue handles that, not the artists. We are the ones searching people. We are the ones, uh, we literally have a ticker counting everybody who comes in. So when we hit that capacity, we're gonna tell you you can't come in, especially during COVID times, you know? It, it, the garden went from about 16,000 to about 6,000, you know? So that's just from my experience. If you guys didn't know, you learn something new every day. On top of security trying to keep attendance numbers and making sure it doesn't go over capacity, this happens. Travis Scott is supposed to stop a group of a hundred or so fans, uh, hundreds of fans who bum rushed security, probably didn't even pay for the event. They clearly ran through the barricade, they ran through the detectors, and they ran through security, not just security, but also a policeman on a horse. Travis Scott is supposed to stop that. Okay. Let's continue. 
another argument is people saying that he should have stopped the show when he seen people fainting. Look at this. show didn't even start yet that was the introduction and people was fainting guess what the show continued michael jackson didn't know if people was passing out from drugs or they were starstruck regardless the show continued and again look how crowded they were travis scott had maybe a crowd of fifty thousand. michael jackson's crowd has ninety thousand. i'm just saying now, I don't want to throw jabs, but this is real. Travis Scott wasn't selling drugs. He wasn't out there in the crowd trampling people. Nor did he tell you not to drink water. I mean, you're in Houston. It's hot. Like, I was just there. I was just there. So, realistically, what would have happened if he would have stopped the show? Do those people live? Does the crowd of 50,000, are they receptive to him getting on the mic and say the show's over because a few people fainted? Not knowing that they died because there's no way to tell that, but a few people fainted. 50,000 people was really going to be like, okay, let's walk out of here. Look, I'm from Boston. I used to take the MBTA train to work. Motherfuckers will be mad if the train got delayed because one person fainted on the train and now there's delays. We mad as shit because now we late for work. So, 50,000 people just walking out, like, willingly? I just highly doubt that would happen. Tell me I'm wrong. The cameraman. I'm a big fan of reality TV, right? This is gonna go somewhere, just listen. I'm a big fan of reality TV. I remember watching MTV, The Real World's Key West. There was a whole tropical storm, a whole tropical storm. And these people thought they was gonna die. They was panicking for their life. Guess what the cameraman did? Recorded. If you guys didn't know, regardless of what happens, it is the cameraman's job to keep rolling, regardless of what's happening. So that is the wrong person you, you would need to go to if somebody needs help immediately. That's the last person you wanna go to. So the people recording that couldn't use that same phone they're recording with to hop on a call, call authorities, call EMTs to, to bring this person back to life. Realistically, what can the cameraman do? I'm sorry. I can't get behind the whole cameraman thing. He has a job specifically, and, and there's people that has a job to save people. The cameraman wasn't one of them. I'm sorry. That, that Tell me if I'm wrong. We could debate this, but I think my points are kind of solid right now. I don't know if you got much of a chance here, but uh, I'm willing to hear you. For the people saying he don't look or sound sorry, what does looking sorry look like? What is sounding sorry sound like look he can't bring the people back from the dead they're gone it's very unfortunate 
Um, my heart goes out to all the family, seriously. But he can't bring them back with his money. But what he can do, and what she offered, is to pay for their funerals and also give the families therapy. That's what he can do at this point. A lot of people would say you're lucky to even get that because he doesn't have to do it. But because he was at his concert, the man has a heart. He's going to do that for the families. Again, it doesn't bring them back, but nothing can bring them back at this point. So what would you guys want to see him do to be convinced that he's sorry? So the next time people attend a Travis Scott concert, just do this, right? Instead of calling him a devil worshiper, which he probably is, but you be accountable for what you do. So don't pop pills. Don't be reckless. Drink water. If you see somebody on the ground, don't walk over them. And if you can't help them, use your phone to contact authorities who can help. Instead of recording them, die. Lastly, this is the worst thing about tragedies that happens in big crowds, right? So some somebody passes out. Everybody has their phones out recording it, right? The reason why people are so comfortable recording it is because, say myself, I'm thinking the next man already called authorities. I'm thinking they already called EMTs. So I'm thinking you called EMTs. You thinking I called EMTs. So now our phones is out and we're recording, but nobody's contacting authorities. And that's the worst part about tragedies in big crowds because everybody think the next man already did it. And when you assume you make an ass out of you and me, and in this case, people lost their life. So we got to do better. Again, I'm willing to be wrong, but let's have the discussion. These are my points. Tell me if I missed something. What do you guys think? Stop recording people die just for some likes in a conversation. I'm turking them out. Dad, what's wrong? Had hit me now, I'm sipping on the deuce deuce. I just wanted to get big on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I'm still here. Well, while you're here, go ahead and click that like button. And the subscribe button. Okay. The notification bell, too. Leave a comment saying you did so. Lastly, click the video on the right for more cool content. It's turp time.